I'm going to show you one of the easiest ways you'll make an ultimate tender buttery potato. This is going to be good. Okay, so here I'm working with around two and a half to three pounds of gold potatoes, and some of them were larger than others. These potatoes are on the smaller side, so you can totally opt to use baby potatoes. I cut the larger ones in half, but the smaller ones, I just left them whole. I'm also going to be adding one envelope or package of onion soup mix. Here I have one stick of unsalted butter that I will be melting. This is going in the slow cooker as well. I have one, this is around 15 ounces, 14.5 ounces of chicken broth. I have a canned chicken broth. You can make your own or use homemade. I'll be adding onion powder, garlic powder, crushed red pepper flakes, and around a six to eight quart slow cooker works for this recipe. So now I'm gonna place all of my ingredients into my slow cooker. And as far as the ratios of the ingredients, start with like a teaspoon of each or just add seasoning to your heart's content. Okay, so now for the onion soup mix. I actually think this is the beefy onion soup mix, but really onion soup mix works. I'm gonna empty that all over the potatoes. And now I'm going to add in my chicken broth. Low sodium works for this as well. Remember, salt and seasoning is to your preference. And I'm gonna add my stick of melted butter right on top. And that's it. I will be garnishing this once the potatoes are done, but for the most part, these ingredients will yield a delicious tender potato. This is going on high, and I'm gonna cook this for a couple of hours or until the potatoes are tender. In the meantime, I'm gonna show you one of my favorite ways to make chicken that goes great with these potatoes. Okay, so here I have a whole chicken. I'm just going to break it down into sections. Um, if you're using all thighs, legs, or if you wanna do this, you can. Um, I'm going to break it down and I'll show you how I season it and how my grandmother would just kind of like throw the flour, shake it around and fry it. So easy. And now you have two pieces. I'm gonna finish the rest of the chicken. Okay, so I'm gonna season this and I'm not gonna measure. Uh, you'll wanna at least have like a teaspoon of salt in this, but in place of the salt, I'm going with a seasoned salt. So, you know, I'm just gonna shake it up. Um, I'm going with the salt-free lemon pepper, which has the lemon and the pepper taste, but no salt. Okay, now I'm going in with some paprika. I'm gonna use one hand to kind of toss everything and kind of give it a flip. And the chicken breast, I cut the chicken breast um, off the bone and in half. These will cook quicker than everything else and I'll just take them out first. Um, and then just go over with your seasoning salt again. Um, I'm going with some lemon pepper and my paprika. If you want poultry seasoning, if you've got a favorite rub, go for it. Some onion powder going in as well. I knew I was missing something. We'll do onion powder and shake in that garlic powder. Then that'll complete what I wanted to season it with. Give it a mix. I'm gonna wash my hands, dry my hands, and I'll show you how she just added the flour, mixed it and fried it. Okay, good stuff. Okay, so I have my pan here, and I am gonna add my cooking oil to the pan, and it's gonna be a shallow fry, so just enough to cover the bottom of the pan, and I want it preheated before I add my chicken in. Once I add the flour to the chicken, I'm just gonna make sure it's coated, and I'm adding it right into my preheated oil. All right, so here we go, dry hands. And actually, I can just use my little scoop that's in here. I'm gonna scoop, this is a quarter cup measuring cup, and I'm gonna just sprinkle the chicken with this. Okay, so going in, I'll do like half of the, and just kinda, I, you could shake it in a bag. She would just use her hand, one, one wet hand, one dry hand, and she would just coat the chicken like this. And it was the best. It wasn't like, there was no egg wash, there was no, 
that's it. Okay, so just kind of coat the chicken. And it goes into the pan and that's abuela's fried chicken and I just loved it. Sometimes I just want something like my abuela where, oops, where there was nothing measured. She measured with her heart and just whipped up a meal. There we go. Okay, so I'm going in at a crooked angle, but chicken's going in skin side down. So. Okay, so I've got my chicken in the pan, and let me give you a better like angle here. And I'm not gonna touch it. I have it on a medium high heat. I'll lower it if I need to. I'm gonna let it cook on the first side. Um, I'll let it cook on the first side for about five minutes at a medium to medium high heat. Once I can kind of move it without it sticking to the pan, I'll give it a flip another five minutes or so. I'll cover with the lid. It's gonna take about 15 minutes, 15 to 20 minutes to cook this chicken because it has, you know, it's bone-in chicken. It's completely thawed. If you're working with colder chicken, it's gonna take a longer time and it won't cook as evenly. So be sure you're working with completely thawed chicken without the chill on it. Give it a flip, it came off super easy. So that means it's ready to flip. I'm not fighting with my chicken and the pan to get it to flip. So I'm going to flip it one more time to the skin side down. There we go. And now I'm going to cover for about 10 minutes, flip it again, let it cook uncovered for like five minutes. The chicken should be done. It's going to take like 15 to 20 minutes to cook a completely thawed, you know, chicken pieces with bone in to make sure the internal temperature is at least 165 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, so here is the finished product. I love this chicken, but any stovetop chicken goes with these potatoes. Even if you do like a pan fried chicken breast that's marinated in season, so good. Okay, so my potatoes have cooked for around two hours. It could be a two to three hour process on high. It just de depends on the size of the potatoes you're working with. These are definitely fork tender. They are perfect. So what I'm going to do is give them a mix and I'm definitely going to turn off this heat source. Just shut that off because they are done. I'm going to garnish with fresh parsley and chives. I chopped these and mixed them. Here I have a little bit of Parmesan cheese, cracked black pepper, and I'm going to shake in a little more crushed red pepper flakes. A lot of the garnishes are to your preference. Even a squeeze of fresh lemon juice or zest mixed in with this is so good. So now I'm just going to top with my Parmesan cheese mixture with that crushed red pepper flakes and black pepper. And then I'm going to garnish with the fresh parsley and chives. And these potatoes are done. They are perfect with a stovetop pan fried chicken. So good. I hope you give this recipe a try. I hope you like it and thanks for watching.